This is the Married to Doctors podcast, episode number 154. So he can totally handle surgery and still throw in a load of laundry? You told me this yeah. guy was smart. And <laughs> You're, <right. well. laughs> You're like, he's super bright. He performs well. I'm sure a super bright performing well student could throw in a load of laundry. Come on. Welcome to season two of Married to Doctors. And let's face it, being married to a doctor isn't as glamorous as it sounds or as the media portrays it. My name's Laura McKeldry. I'm the founder and creator of Married to Doctors. My goal is to strengthen medical marriages and make successful homes happier. Here we take an honest look at the challenges, but we don't dwell in self-pity. Instead, we learn how to manage our emotions and we work through the challenges that are thrown our way. This podcast and this Married to Doctors community is a safe space where I'm vulnerable with you in hopes that you'll know that you're not alone and that you'll feel better understood. Josh and I have made it through the ups and downs, and I know no matter what you're facing, you too can find the answers you need, and you never need to feel as alone as I did. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Married to Doctors. Today, you're going to have the opportunity to hear me coaching Katie on a new subject. And that subject is dun, 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 the surgery rotation. You know, so many physician spouses have concerns over the specialty choice. And of course we do, because we're worried about the hours. Sometimes we're concerned about the salary compared to the high figure six student debt loan that we're carrying around. We can also be concerned about the job opportunities, the big city we might have to live in for them to practice in that way, or we could even be concerned about their step scores and if they can actually even get into the specialty that they want. I just want you to know, no matter what concerns you and your family are facing or have faced when it comes to specialty choices, you're certainly not alone. This comes up for a lot of couples. And in episode 64, I interviewed my husband, Josh. We discussed our crazy messed up journey with coming to where we are now. We're so thankful for his current job and those that he works with. But it often reminds me of that Rascal Flat song that God blessed the broken road that led me straight to you because the road here was quite the broken road for us. So... Even though we've had this twisted road and it has been a little less than desirable at times, I'm really happy with where we landed and it has given me a ton of experience and really because of and due to that crazy journey, you know, I do the work that I do today, which is being a life coach for physician partners. I love helping people manage their lives and relationships when they're married to medicine. One question I have for all of you is just, what are you currently doing to manage the stress in your life? And if you like your answer, that's fantastic. But if you're frustrated and not real happy with how you're showing up with your stress, or you wish you could show up differently, I just want you to consider reaching out to me for a 20-minute call. Let's see if I can help. It would be my honor to coach you. All right. Enjoy this episode and listening to more live coaching with Katie. All right, we have time for one more. What do you want to do a thought model on? Could be anything, anything at all. Loneliness, something else, your relationship, him working a lot of hours, it could be anything. What do you want to talk about? Let's do something with Nick. So he's definitely a little on edge right now considering it's a high stakes rotation. So I guess the circumstance could be that Nick is under a lot of stress. Okay, maybe. I would say stress is a feeling, but what rotation is he on? Uh, General surgery. Okay, so Nick is on general surgery, which everyone's like, yes, Laura, that is a synonym for stress. (laughs) (laughs) But I just want to verify with all the listeners that technically stress I would define that more as if it goes in the feeling line than the circumstance line. So we're just going to put, he's on general surgery rotation. Okay. So that's more neutral, right? 
Okay. Yeah. Now, is your thought that Nick is stressed? Yes. I think he's stressed and I think he's tired. And Nick he turns a little grumpy. <laughs> oh, and grumpy. Okay, you have lots of thoughts about Nick right now. Not only is he <laughs> stressed and tired, he's also a little grumpy for Nick. Okay. All right. I don't hold that against him. I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess the question, the first question I should ask you is like, what's your intention? Are you wanting to make Nick feel better or you feel better? I think both of us, because I'm frustrated by him feeling those ways. And when he feels those ways, it makes me frustrated. So it's kind of like, it goes, mm. goes both ways. I feel bad for him that he feels like he's under such immense pressure. So it, it's frustrating that I can't do anything to make that go away. But because he is under so much pressure, like our life together can sometimes take a back burner because of that. Does that make sense? Yes. And this is really interesting because like Nick's not here. I'm not coaching right. Nick. So I'm glad you said, well, I want to feel better too. I'm actually frustrated, right? Because that's what we have to get into. And when we get into that, what I'm seeing you say, seeing you say, <laughs> what I'm <laughs> hearing you say is that, yes, you have frustration, but that is actually more, I would guess from your thought that you can't make it go away. Yes. That's I what can't. causes the frustration. You're not yeah. really frustrated at Nick. In fact, you no. even said, I don't even, what did you say a minute ago? You're like, I can't help. I don't, I don't hold that against him in any way. I, I mean, like I know You're that You're super he, sweet. I have lots, <laughs> I work with lots of people that do hold it against their spouse. <laughs> they so Nick is lucky to have you. You're like, oh, I don't hold that against him. <laughs> I know that there's a lot of pressure at, I think I'm more frustrated that I can't do anything because it's not a pressure that I'm putting on him. Yes. Okay. So let's look again at how this thought model should really look then. Your thought model, your thoughts, not Nick's. So the circumstance, Nick's on general surgery, your thought is, I can't make that go away. Yeah. Your feeling is frustration. And then tell me a little bit about how you're acting and what kind of result it's creating in, in the relationship. So I would say the action is like everything around our apartment. I'm basically just like taking care of everything. I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm, you know, doing the laundry. I'm making sure that, you know, everything, I'm paying the bills on time. I'm, I, I kind of am putting everything that I can control into my own realm so that there's nothing else for him to worry about aside from school and rotations and studying and doing the best that he can. So in turn, the result is like, I'm exhausted. I feel like I'm doing it all by myself. It's oh my gosh, fascinating. I want, I want to pause you here for a second. Yeah. When we began, you said Nick was stressed, tired, and maybe a little grumpy. But I want you to think about how you are now stressed, tired, and a little grumpy. Yeah. No, I, I definitely am. <laughs> <laughs> right? The result is you're ending up stressed, tired, and grumpy. And I'm telling you that the reason you're stressed, tired, and grumpy is because you're trying to take care of everything. Yeah. And that I totally understand that. But why are you trying so hard to take care of everything so your husband doesn't suffer any more than he's already suffering? Because you have so many thoughts about not being able to take away this burden of this rotation from him. Yeah. So um, what we need to do is change your thoughts about this rotation. Okay. So let's brainstorm some thoughts you could have. What are some thoughts you could have about this rotation? I think that he is interested in surgery. So I think that this could be a really 
great opportunity for him to learn a lot and get exposure into what he may want to do. Yeah. He's interested in surgery. He's learning so much right now. Um, you could say things like, he's got this great opportunity. I mean, he definitely has what it takes to to perform well. I mean, he's incredibly bright, so I, I'm i not concerned about, about that. So maybe instead of, you know, worrying about that I can't change it, I need to see the positive in him doing it right now. Mm -hmm. Could you believe something like, this is what general surgery should look like? Or are you like morally opposed to how much they work? Some people can believe that and some people can't. So we can work through it either way. But like, if you- can I think I'm conflicted because I can understand that this is the demand of general surgery and I can totally get behind that. But I'm not saying that I want him to do that. <laughs> Yeah. Because I understand that that the demand for that specialty, I can completely like agree that that is th these are the demands that it requires. But yeah. other side of me, I'm saying, so I really hope that he doesn't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you're awesome, Katie. You're trying to be so kind to your <laughs> husband but I want you to realize that you can end up setting yourself up for being the one that's frustrated just like back here in your model right when yeah. you say he's on surgery rotation and you can't make that go away but you're gonna by golly you're gonna try you're gonna <laughs> yeah. work yourself into a tizzy to take any care of the world off of his plate so I think some of the things you said are well, like he has what it takes to perform well. This is the demands of general surgery. You can say he can handle the rotation and his home chores. <laughs> you know, he can handle it. He's going to yeah. be a general surgeon. He's going to need to, right? Otherwise, you're going to have this feeling of, oh, crap, don't choose that because I'll end up being like, how I feel right now. Everything forever and ever, right? Yeah. And that that's not going to create a good feeling for you, right? Right. So he can totally handle surgery and still throw in a load of laundry. You told me this yeah. guy was smart and performed <laughs> <Right. well. laughs> You're like, he's super bright. He performs well. I'm sure a super bright performing well student could throw in a load of laundry. Come on. Yeah. So my point is not that you shouldn't be a helpful spouse. My point is that if you work yourself down and put all that responsibility on you, then you're not feeling well, you're tired and grumpy, and then you're showing up in the relationship as someone who's a little moody and grumpy. Yeah, and maybe and a little bit of resentment because I am getting frustrated. Right. So you have to stop ahead of time and try not to create that situation, right? Yeah. So Definitely. if he's going to do surgery, he can handle surgery. He can handle it. He's supposed to do it. I mean, even just thinking something like this is part of his medical training. Like yeah. just something neutral. Like you don't know at this point that he'll become a general surgeon. Like yeah. he hasn't yeah. committed yeah. to that yet. But this is a rotation within his education. So just making it more neutral, like this is part of his medical education and it's okay. And maybe that's the better way to see it too, so that it doesn't feel like it's going to be like a lifetime of, of that feeling. You right. Know, almost so make when it. When he commits to general surgery, you need to coach <laughs> again. You need to reach out to me again. Yeah. I'll yeah. coach you through that one too. Yeah, but honestly, it's true. Like, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's really true, though. We have so many thoughts. I mean, a lot of people have very strong opinions on their spouse's specialty. Yeah. And there are people that will say, that's a no for me. Like, they're, you know, when it comes to certain trainings or fellowships, there are people that will put that line in the sand. 
And it's not my place as a coach to tell people if and when they should put a line in the sand. But I definitely think that it's worth getting some coaching over. Yeah. Because if we are going to put down like a definitive statement like that, I think we need to really like our reasons why. Yeah. That's not my personality, I would say. I'm because I, I also wouldn't want to feel like I was holding him back from how he would feel fulfilled. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think I could ever take a stance like that. I may say that I don't necessarily agree with it, but I wouldn't be so sure as to say, like, you can't do it. But then I might not like time, it. I don't want you to, if he were to get to the point where he's choosing that, then what we would do is work through some thought models where you right. can truly be at peace with that. And I'm not saying like, yeah, yeah. just say you're at peace. Like I'm saying like Actually truly generate be. believable thoughts so that right. you truly are at peace with that. Yeah. And I only spent like, you know, six or eight years coming to peace with my husband's choice. So <laughs> <laughs> if there's a thought out there, I've had it. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely challenging because I, I mean, I'm an accountant. So for me, it's like, black or white like just move past it and there are so many moving parts to this experience and training that it's a little intimidating yeah it can definitely feel intimidating but i'll end with this intimidation is a feeling right what do you need to think to not feel intimidated our relationship is stronger than that and I'm not afraid of facing challenges together. So I need to just remember the strength of us before I get too nervous about what might happen. Yeah, very well said. And also for you as an individual, you need to not be afraid to face things as an individual when it comes to friendships. Right. All right, Katie. Well, our time's about up. This has been awesome. What do you think was your, uh, what do you think you learned the most from this session or what stood out to you the most? I need to just rein it in on my, on my thought process and try to take a step back and see the situations without an emotion attached to them and understand that the circumstance I I can't change at the time. So how I think about it is what I can control. So trying to get a more positive grasp on it, like saying this is part of his training. This is what he is meant to do and he can handle it and he can perform well and I can be independent on things and it's okay. So I need to just handle it. Right. You can handle yeah. it. You can perform well. You can make new friendships in any city yeah. that you have to go to for training. So I just need to reframe it to take the emotions out of the circumstance like this is crappy. I need to just <laughs> change that. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right. We'll <laughs> see you later. Okay, okay. thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, that wraps up this interview or coaching session rather with Katie. If you enjoyed this, please consider being the next brave volunteer to be coached on the show. Or you can always choose something more private and just sign up for coaching yourself. Find out more at marriedtodoctors.com. This podcast is free and it's available wherever you enjoy listening to podcasts. I release episodes every Thursday, and I would love for you to subscribe the next time you're in your podcast app. Hit that subscribe button so that you'll be updated whenever I release a new episode. I'd also encourage you to explore the archives. You don't need to feel obligated to start at the beginning. Just jump in and find what you need. It's easy to search on my website, marryingtodoctors.com. Also on the website, you're gonna find additional resources including some workbooks that you're welcome to download for your personal use. I'm super excited for this new season. I know that time is one of our greatest resources, and I want to thank you for being here each week. I'm working really hard to make sure this season is even more packed full of value than season one was. Training took forever, yet life is flying by. 
Let's make sure your life isn't just successful, but it's also happy. Again, my name is Laura McKeldry, and no matter where you find yourself on the journey of love and medicine, I'm in your corner cheering for you.